Now, the vast majority, approximately 95% of the people of all countries, go around and around without aim or purpose. They drift with the circumstances of life, good or bad. A drifter is one who permits himself to be influenced and controlled by circumstances outside of his own mind. Whereas the successful individuals create their own circumstances and ride them to victory. When you're on purpose, you're living on purpose. You will never quit if you have a real purpose. A burning desire to be and to do is the starting point from which the dreamer must take off. But what I have done has been recorded, it's been tested, it's being taken to a free world, and it's going to benefit millions of people who are not yet born. And it's going to benefit millions of people who are not yet born. We're some of those people. That we're spreading this to the world. As your awareness grows, the doubt is gone so that you can manifest whatever it is your heart desires. Isn't that beautiful? Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed so far this incredible week. We've had wonderful responses from your drifter assessments. I've seen some of them myself on the Facebook group. Thank you so much for being honest. Thank you for participating. And we're so glad that you're here and we're so happy to help you. So today we have a very special guest, someone who I love working with. We enjoy laughing together. We enjoy studying this material together. And um, we also actually get together every morning at 5.30 in the morning with many of our coaches to meditate, write out our goals, and do gratitude and study. So today's special guest is the one and only Jeffrey Gittimer, who is the world's number one expert in selling. He's known as the king of sales for a reason, someone I admire greatly. He's also a best-selling author of the Little Red Book of Sales, the Sales Bible, and many, many more. He has written over 17 books, and he's an incredible writer, speaker, and a great friend of mine now. And I'm so honored to bring up Jeffrey Gittimore. All right, Gabrielle, you ready? I was born ready. All right, let's do it. Okay. What? If you were to do a Google search on today's speaker, here are some of the key words you might use. Dad, grandfather, writer, sales expert, hall of fame speaker, pioneer of online training and e-learning, creative, branded, real world, edgy, entertaining, and one of a kind. He's the author of 12 best-selling books, including The Sales Bible, The Little Red Book of Selling, The Little Gold Book of Yes Attitude, Customer Loyalty is Priceless, and his latest book, The Sales Manifesto. Jeffrey's books have been on major bestseller lists more than 500 times. Jeffrey has delivered more than 2,500 seminars to audiences all around in the world, and he is here today to help you sell more, serve memorably, and earn to your full potential. Jeffrey's books will be available after his talk today. I might not be able to go to college if you don't get at least two books, one for yourself and one for your best customer. Jeffrey says that's called the sympathy close. Please help me welcome my dad, the king of sales, Jeffrey Gittimer. Well, that was a very low expectation set of introductions, and I totally appreciate it. I'm going to be talking to you today about leadership and why it's good. I've written a book on leadership and uh, I, because it's just so important in a role, even if you're a salesperson, you're still a leader. But if you're a coach, you're a leader. And I want to talk to you about how you can be a better one by challenging you with ideas that you can turn into money. That's the whole deal. You, whatever I do today, I promise you, you can turn it into money. And as you can see by my t-shirt, 
I'm a capitalist. And I want to make sure that you understand that, that we're about the world of business. And my job is to help you do more, be more, earn more. Uh, I have a set of slides that I'm going to be uh, talking to you through. And I want to make sure that you understand there will be a replay. I recommend you take notes. I recommend you do screenshots. I make, recommend you do anything you want. And at the end of this, I'm going to ask for open questions. I'm going to give you a place where you can link and make another call to us. But I want you to know you can answer. I'll answer. I'll stay and answer any question you have as long as you want. Cool. Just don't drift. Cool. Now, before we get started, I have a major learning rule. I may say something and you may go, yeah, I know that. I don't care if you know it. I want to know how good you are at it on a scale of one to 10. For example, you know you need a good voicemail message, but yours probably sucks. So think about it in terms of knowing versus doing, or actually listen to it and then figure out a way to apply it in your world. Know versus apply. And I don't really consider myself, I'm not here to teach you. I'm simply here to help you. I'm here to make you think. If I ask you how important thinking is, you're going to go, oh, Jeffrey, it's real important. I go, okay, great. Take out your day planner, your calendar, whatever, and show me the word think in there anywhere. You probably have not set aside enough time for you, most important person in the world, to simply think, contemplate your future and where you're going to be going day by day. Not once a week. I'm talking about every day. We'll talk about morning routines. Someone asked me at the end of this um, what my morning routine is, and I'll share it with you. But this is a place to concentrate. And concentrate is a very key word in the Napoleon Hill lexicon. I'll talk about that in a minute. I started reading Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich in 1972. I read it 14 times in one year because we had to do a chapter a day as a book report uh, with a group of, of sales guys. And there's only 15 chapters in the book. So every three weeks, <laughs> you had to start over again. And it was amazing. By the fifth or sixth read, I got it. I had my, my positive attitude forever. The original book looks like this. Two years later, Napoleon Hill wrote How to Sell Your Way Through Life, arguably the best sales book ever written. And I'm doing a course with the Napoleon Hill Institute on that very course right now. Several of the lessons are already done. This is my library. This is the shelf that I have devoted to Napoleon Hill. Autograph, coin, first editions of the books. I'm a historian and a collector. Uh, this is my daughter, Gabrielle. She's 15 years old now. She's pointing to my book, The Little Red Book of Selling, Face Out in the Barnes & Noble. And, and it is the best-selling sales book in Barnes & Noble for the past 20 years. Got to be a reason for that. And the Napoleon Hill Institute called me up and said, would you like to annotate the first writings of Napoleon Hill 20 years before Think and Grow Rich? I said, oh, yeah, I do. So if you want to have, you, you can get an audio of that. You can get a, a book of that. You can get a, a whatever you want. Go to Amazon and click on it. Napoleon Hill called these the five greatest words in the English language. Think about that. These are the five greatest words in the English language. Imagination, desire, enthusiasm, self-confidence, and concentration. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is your time. I'm here to help you today in a way that it will challenge you intellectually, challenge you monetarily, and put you on a path to a greater income. All you have to do is concentrate. And you know, we're in a, a very changing time world. Um, change is nothing new. Just take a look at these things. L look at what has happened to the word change. Is that crazy? Yellow Pages, Google, newspaper, online news, Blackberry, iPhone. How many people have a Blackberry? That was a joke, wasn't it? Total joke. Okay, so that's the challenge that everybody has right now. What do you do with the change and how do you take it and not look at it as change, but really it's opportunity. What are the opportunities that are being presented to you? Because change is also online presence, social media, social selling, online reviews, and of course, service. The reality is, Every complaint that you get in your business or every service call that you have to make is a sales opportunity. Your job is to turn it into an opportunity. 
because I'm not giving you a seminar today. I'm just giving you an opportunity and you have to decide how are you going to take advantage of it? I'm not going to change the world, but I can help change your world. And which do you spend more time in? And shouldn't you be investing more time in your world? And <laughs> my slides are not available, although there will be a replay. You just can't download my slides, but you can get them and just take a picture, take a screenshot of anything that resonates with you. Here's where you can find me. My, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, but I live online and I'm on every social media platform. Whenever you see my logo, that means I'm changing the subject and going to the next one because we only have a few minutes and I want to make sure we take full advantage of them. But I want you to go to the chat right now. I'm counting on you to give me some feedback about where you are in the world so that as I'm doing my talk, I can customize it more towards you. Ready? When did you first read Think and Grow Rich? Put it in the chat right now. Boom. Hurry up. I got six questions I want to ask you. When did you first read Think and Grow Rich? Bum -bum, bum -bum, bum -bum, bum -bum. I don't see any. Come on. I don't see anything. Five years ago. One year ago. If you're a Facebook user, put your name in there too so I know who the heck you are. Sometimes it doesn't register your name up. Think about it. last time you're like, seriously. Okay. And then the next question is, haven't read it yet. Okay. Several years ago. How many times have you read Think and Grow Rich? Just put a number. One, two, three, five, ten, 10, whatever. Put a number in the chat. You ready for the next one? We're going fast. How many times have you read it? Good. This is so good. If you've read Think and Grow Rich more than once, you got a shot at creating what, what I've asked you to do. Albert, way to go. 20 times. Love that. Yeah, you have to have it with you all the time. Started this year. Read faster. Four and three. Wow. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Okay. Now let's go to the next question. What kind of, if you're a coach, what kind of coaching do you do? Just put a couple words in the chat. Life coach, sales coach, business coach. What kind of coaching do you do? Bum, 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 bum. What kind of coaching do you do? Come on, you can do it. I want to see it. Let's roll. Vocal coach, transformational coach. Yeah, this is it's important to me to understand what kind of coaching you do because everybody has it a different way. Everyone coaches a different way. I'm going to create a strategy for coaching to where you can coach better, but that, that will come in another month or two. It's all about the questions you ask and your zone of genius. Your zone of genius. I want you to think about that. I'm an unofficial moral boost. I love that. I freaking love that. Be as creative as you want. Just put the information in there. And then the question is, it's a yes or no question. Are you certified? Is your, is your, are you a certified coach in where your expertise is? Bum, 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 bum. Are you certified? Yes. No. Yes. No. And if you're not certified, you got to think about, you know, what, what could you do to become certified? And I'll give you that answer before we're done today. Because you can become a Napoleon Hill coach. And then all of a sudden you're certified and everything you do has that Napoleon Hill moniker to it. And it's phenomenal. Like I'm a certified Napoleon Hill coach. You have to be. You have to be. It's the best name in personal development ever in the history of mankind. Now, I want you to put AI and then a number from 1 to 10. What is your AI, artificial intelligence prowess? Because most people pretty much suck at it. You got it? Most people pretty much suck at AI, but it is the future. It is the future. And I want to make sure you understand that moving forward. Where are you to say AI? 7.75 
it's most people don't understand AI at all. But I can tell you that, and I'm very close to it right now. But I'm going to launch my my channel in another. I'm going to say 30 days. It's going to be unbelievable. I'm looking at stuff right now. Oh my god! All right, the next one you're going to have to put something in there. Here's the next question. You have a brand. Just put brand, B-R-A-N-D, and then how are you known by your brand? What, what's your what's your your brand thing? One to ten. Brand one to ten. Brand one to ten. One being crappy, ten being a million. Ten being you're the greatest. Just put a number in there, and then we're going to start. You ready so far? <laughs> you have to have a great brand or people. See, here's the deal. This is the secret. I'm giving you a secret that is not on a slide, but this is incredible. When you talk to somebody, anybody on the planet, they're going to Google you. And if you have a brand behind you, that's going to show up. If you have a platform behind you, that's going to show up. You have to have a platform. You have to have a brand. You have to have some learning knowledge of artificial intelligence or you're screwed. Now, let's get into the fundamentals of leadership. I don't say basics. I say fundamentals. These are my rules, my teachings, and my philosophy of leadership. And it's a very short lesson. Ready? This is my book on leadership. As a world-class expert, coach, manager, boss, leader, whatever they call you, your people and your customers need to see your enthusiasm to become enthusiastic. Your people and your customers need to see your belief to become believers. Your people and your customers need to see your hard work to maximize their hard work. And they need to see your dedication in order to become dedicated. And they need to see your ethics in order to become ethical. Are you with me so far on this? Yes, you are. I want to go back to the very beginning. I said, hey, before we get started, and you were relaxed. Before we get started is an incredible way to start your sales presentation or your coaching session because it's informal and puts people at ease. It allows you to start in a relaxed, informal way and often a more truthful way. And now it's time to change that subject. As a leader, as a coach, do they want to listen to you or do they have to listen to you? I want you to think about that and be real with yourself. The three most important elements of leadership are as follows. Attitude, belief, and resilience. Attitude is the way you dedicate yourself to the way you think. Think it's good, it's good. Think it's bad, bad. Your focus attitude sets their focus attitude. When you come in and you're on it and you're in it and your attitude is great, you can actually transfer your attitude to others. But your belief, your belief system drives your attitude. So I'm going to give you the five parts of belief. Number one, you got to believe you work for the best company in the world or that you have the best brand in the world. Number two, you got to believe that you offer the best products and services or you're the best coach in the world. And third, you got to believe that you're the best person in the world. Who are you? Fourth, you have to believe you can differentiate yourself from your competition. When you compare yourself, it's a price comparison. When you differentiate from, it's a value comparison. And fifth, and most important, you have to believe that the customer is better off having purchased from you. And you can't believe it in your head. You have to believe it in your heart. You jerk on their heartstrings. The wallet comes popping right out of that back pocket. If you have a young child or a young grandchild, ask yourself, what's their closing ratio? Right. Heart is attached to wallet. In sales, your belief and the belief of others plays a major role in the customer's decision. So I'm going to tell you what how great I am, 
or I'm going to ask you questions to where you know I know, but then you're going to Google me and where's my online proof? Everything sells these days by online proof. What doesn't matter who you are, your Yelp, your your you know, your TripAdvisor, your Amazon, everyone wants a five. Everyone wants a five. And my question is, are you a five? Your people need to see your belief in order to become believers. That belief is transferable if it's deep enough. Resilience is a military term. It creates leadership success. Resilience is your ability to react, respond, and recover from situations the instant that they occur. As a leader, your attitude sets the tone for morale, respect, retention, sales, and loyalty. Look what it does. Look how important attitude is in everything that you do. As a sales leader, your people need to see your sales ability to maximize their sales ability. If you're a sales leader and you're not as, you're not better than your best sales guy, they're never going to listen to you. Sales leaders support the sales team by going out with salespeople. Leaders focus on outcome to ensure completed tasks. In other words, what happens after the project is done or after the sale is completed? Don't focus on the task or project completion, focus on what happens after it's done. Measure outcome, measure loyalty, measure reorders, measure testimonials. That's the outcome. Outcome, not task, outcome, not sale, outcome, not numbers. What happens after the customer takes ownership? What happens after the coaching session is over? What happens after the project is done? What happens after the customer takes ownership? That's a key process in whatever you're doing. I created this phrase back in literally back in the late 90s and many people have it up on their wall. It never costs as much to fix the problem as it does to not fix the problem. Whatever people have an issue with, you make sure you fix it immediately. All right, there's more. Leaders are responsible by example and expect the same from their people. Responsibility, not blame. Everybody looks and looks at leaders. Your people watch your every move. If the leader is slack, and I don't mean the program, I'm talking about slack in terms of moving forward and taking action, or lacks work ethic or is slow to decide, they've given tacit permission to your team to be exactly the same. The best leaders are first in, last out, and work their butts off in the middle. Leaders value and display tolerance and temperance, first in themselves, then from others. Big rule, praise in public. Rule two, reprimand in private. And rule 2.5, record yourself doing both praise and reprimand so you can hear who you are. See how you sound to other people by listening to yourself. You may not like how you sound. You may have to change how you sound. Leaders who are excellent communicators are listened to intently and clearly understood. One more characteristic that gets more productivity and generates more achievement and positive outcome is clear communication. All leaders have a responsibility and a challenge to be excellent. Got it? best. You don't just lead by example. You set the standard. Let's take it deeper. You have an opportunity to set the standard with your business. This is how the sale is actually made. You attract with message. You don't cold call. You engage with value, not a sales pitch or a bunch of slides. You connect with emotion by asking them emotional-based questions, and then you sell with proof. Your customers think you're great. Show the video. I tweeted it one morning. Look at this. 15 retweets, 38 likes at, at 6.37 in the morning. Think about it. Some companies have an ABC or a 123 method of who they, who they deal with, uh, uh, you know, how they deal with customers. I don't. All customers are treated the same, like gold, because you never know where they are. You never know who they're talking about. 
Now I have a an ebook that I'm going to share with you today. It's called Disruptive Sales Coaching. I'm a disruptive person, but I want to make sure that you understand if you at the end of my talk, I'm going to ask you to register for a call. Anybody who registers for the call gets the ebook. It's like 40 pages. Really good. The key for you is daily. The word is daily. Daily training and practice, getting ready and committing to be your best. And when I tell you that repetition is the mother of mastery, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what you don't realize is this. If you hear a song that you like, you tap your foot. After you hear it five times, you can actually sing along. But after the 10th time, you can sing the chorus in the shower, in the morning, probably off key. But you've mastered it. One of our best American writers is Malcolm Gladwell. Practice isn't the thing you do once you're good. It's the thing you do that makes you good. How insightful is that? If you offer the best products and service, you better have the best people helping customers buy them, use them, and profit from them. In 1946, the great Red Motley said, nothing happens until a sale is made. The accountants don't need to come to work. The warehouse guys don't need to come in and put things on a truck, and the drivers don't need to be there. Everything revolves around a sale. So here are the actions that I've observed about leadership that are mandatory for leadership success. Internal actions that build trust, earn respect, and create a team of inspired people. In other words, it starts internally and then goes externally. Inspired to be productive and do their best. And literally, it's only 1% of these people that really take the actions. Great leaders are value providers, not order givers. At the top of every employee's list of job wants besides more money are to be appreciated and valued. Don't tell me that people, well, they don't care about the money. Bullshit. They care about money. But they also want to be appreciated, valued, complimented, and told they're doing a great job. When genuine appreciation is given for a job well done, productive attitude thrives. Leaders tell the truth all the time. Truth creates trust and confidence and a reliance on the consistency of your message. All leadership characteristics and outcomes fade if there is a lack of truth. Same in life. Leaders are in control. Leaders earn respect, baby. Leaders are quick to decide and are not afraid to make or admit mistakes. Respected because they take action and respected because they are vulnerable to fail, vulnerable to make a mistake, vulnerable to say something wrong. But leaders focus on outcome to ensure completed tasks. What happens after the project is done, the message is delivered, the speech is over, the product sits in someone's office? What happens after that coaching session takes place? And you go, well, Jeffrey, should I hire this person? Here's the formula that my friend Richard Brody, who wrote Microsoft Word 1.0, used when he was in charge of employee hiring at Microsoft. Smart, happy, self-starting people with a past history of success. You have those four qualities, time to make the hire. Smart, happy, self-starting people with a past history of success. That's your hire. When your employee is on the job, they must be both qualified and happy. Unhappy people, no bueno. So I want to know, do you recruit for skill and then train for attitude? And the answer is no. It's easier to hire for attitude and train for skill. Much easier. And you're going to be away a hell of a lot better off as a, as a result of doing that. Leaders train with their people continuously. Don't say, here's a course. Take the course with your people. Train to retain, not sell to succeed. Train to retain, not to sell. I want these people to succeed at the job, not sell to succeed. Got it? If training is to have lasting value, it must have leadership support and, and this is the toughest one, leadership participation with your people, with your people, with your people. And leaders have to train to be better leaders. 
So start by rating. Here's a couple of questions. Rate yourself one to a hundred. I got a, a few things to rate yourself. Anything less than 74% out of a hundred requires immediate action. Roll. Leaders are wide open to new ideas and innovation. Rate yourself one to a hundred. That's the way we've always done it. Or I'm not that into social selling stuff is a recipe for failure. Leaders are tech savvy, one to a hundred. Leaders are tweeters. Lead the way to communicate value and ideas through social media. How's your social media? One to a hundred. You got to harness that power. There's a power in social media in the millions. You have to participate in order to be able to make it happen. The power of reputation, social media, and social brand. How is that for you? One to a hundred. Um, how many of you have ever tweeted? I've never tweeted. <laughs> well, I don't do that. Hundreds of millions of people do it every day. Do it. These are my minimums. A thousand Facebook likes, 500 Twitter followers, 501 LinkedIn connections, 25 YouTube videos, some kind of an Instagram account, and you email value messages. And, and I think this is one of the most underdone critical processes. You have to have a weekly podcast. If you're a great coach and you want to be on my podcast, register for a call this afternoon when I'm done. It's all about becoming known as a business of value and a person of value. That's the key. Your example can create an avalanche of great service, goodwill, loyal customers, increased sales, and a better reputation or not. You hold the key. The person who answers the phone holds the key. You know, you, you, you go to a hotel that does $20 million a year. You go up to the front desk and some slob says, you checking in? I got, no, I'm here for my hair transplant. What do you think I'm doing? Why don't they just say, welcome? You're going to have the best stay you've ever had. It's all in the words that you say when you very first start the conversation. Leaders concentrate on and think best. Not second best, that's first loser. Best. It always takes extra effort to be or strive to be best. That's why so many people fail. Failure occurs when people, leaders or not, fail to do their best and be their best, keyword here, daily. Leaders are readers. Constantly searching for new and better ways to train the team or taking a leadership position. This is your major responsibility, finding new information, finding better ways. And less in repetition until mastered. You start out by understanding, and then you become proficient and finally, you master through repetition. Leaders remain committed to be their best and do their best daily. The best leaders never waver. Loyal, steadfast examples of what and who others aspire to be and be like. Come on, that's you. It's not just a mission-driven thing. It's a personal mission-driven thing. Your personal mission Sets your internal tone for your external execution. Leaders are respected and followed because of their commitment to be the best. And I'm challenging you right now. Your commitment to be the best needs to be all day, every day, 365 days a year, or 66 if it's a leap year. No days off. And you have to be known as a coach and a teacher, not a manager or a boss. Big difference, both in results and morale. Yeah, I'm the boss around here. And no. Leaders display resilience. And I'm going to give you that definition again because it's so important. Your ability to react, respond, and recover from situations the instant that they occur. Something's always going to happen. A customer is going to complain. You're going to need to do something. Whatever it is. Boom, your resilience and your experience will help you through it. So now, on a scale of 1 to 100, 
Did I just define your leadership? Maybe there needs to be some self-improvement there. We can help you. You got to be inspired to be your best and do your best every single day. Uh, this is a picture of Nick Foles after the Eagles won the Super Bowl. It is one of my favorite pictures on the planet. It will happen again this year. And uh, it will be Jalen Hurts lifting that Super Bowl trophy after we kicked the crap out of the Kansas City Chiefs yet a second time. Execute the lost secret of leadership. Now, I'm, I'm wrapping up right now, so I want you to understand this significance. If you have a child who's under one year old, the odds are that that child has not walked yet. Put the name of somebody who's a, under one year old that hasn't walked yet in the chat. Somebody put your little kid in there, little kid's name. The lost secret of leadership is something that everyone knows, but I can best do the metaphor through a young child. So far, nobody's put one in there, so I guess you all have grown kids, but here we go. You got a young kid, the kid's about to walk, and you go, come on to daddy, come on, you can do it, come on to mommy, come on, you can do it, and this kid is encouraged to walk all the way. On the day that that kid walks, well, first of all, if the kid doesn't walk in, in a month, what are you going to say? Noah, you're not walking in two weeks, no college. No, you don't do it that way. You go, come on, Noah, you can do it. Come on, bud. You're the greatest. Let's go. Jeremiah, you're the greatest. And the day that kid takes the first step, all hell breaks loose. Pictures, videos, call the grandparents, ice cream, cake, everything. Then the kid turns two, and he has a brand new first name, and his name is No. No, Noah. No, Jeremiah. That's not how it goes. You can't do that. No, no, no. And then three, and then they get time out. You know what time out is, right? That's when the kid goes in the corner and figures out how to do it again without getting caught. And then four, and then no TV, and then no computer, five, six, seven, no phone, eight, Staying home, can't go out, 9, 10, you're grounded. Unbelievable what parents will do to kids as they mature. 11, 12, you're an embarrassment to this family. We're never taking you anyplace in public. And then they graduate from high school and they start to work for you and you're wondering what's wrong with these kids. Well, it started out wrong. And it's going to stay wrong as long as you're there. Here's the key. You treat everybody like a one-year-old, you just drop the baby talk. You can't go, come on, baby, you can get out of bed at nine o'clock. Come on, you can do it. No, you have to encourage them all the way. You encourage them to be their best. You encourage them, you support them, you cheer them on to be their best and to do their job the best and learn the best. Real leaders encourage, not demand. They build pride with that you-can-do-it attitude and, and your philosophy and your communication style. Leaders encourage people to succeed, and that includes a helpful, positive attitude. Well, I told you five times. No, no, no. Come on, bud. I've only told you five times. you got five more to go. Encourage them all the way up to the day that you may have to fire them. But I want them to say, if you do leave, this guy's the best boss I ever had. I want you to understand that your attitude and your encouragement tone sets the tone for everybody. All right, so we got some immediate actions that are needed. If you'd like to be involved with Napoleon Hill or the Napoleon Hill Institute, either as a coach or a mentor or even a student, you've got to go. I'm inviting you to sign up for a brief call. Can I have that slide? There we go. Just put a call in with me for that QR code. I might call you, Cleona might call you, somebody's going to call you from the Napoleon Hill Institute and talk to you about what do you want? Maybe some of you want to be a coach for Napoleon Hill to use the brand. Maybe some of you want to be uh, a mentor that you can help or a coach that you can help other people who need Napoleon Hill coaching, or you may want to add that moniker to your coaching practice so that you get you and Napoleon Hill walking into somebody's office, not just you. 
incredible. We also have a bunch of courses. There's all kinds of stuff that's available, but rather than go through a bunch of stuff, just book a call. This QR code will help you get to that next level. Now, uh, all you have to do is, and some of you, by the way, are Napoleon Hill coaches and you're, you know, you're putting that in the chat. It's the best phone call you can make. That's exactly correct. Like I've been, I have been associated with Napoleon Hill since 1972. I get it. I totally get it. I get him, his lifetime, his practices. I'm a world-class expert at Napoleon Hill, but I'm telling you, the Napoleon Hill brand is the best in the world. I'm the, the pride of my entire practice revolves around my association with the Napoleon Hill Foundation and the Napoleon Hill Institute. It's been a benchmark for my in my life since 1972. Think about that. Think about when you were born. So I'm a solid 50 years into it. And you have to be the same. Okay. So go go to the QR code. You can book a call whenever day you want, whatever time you want. We'll probably send you nine more emails about booking a call. But I'm telling you right now, this is the place to be, whether you want to teach or learn. I have learned a lifetime from Napoleon Hill, and so can you. But you can also teach it now and, and earn amazing money. All right. Um, any questions? Come on, put questions in the chat, and I'll answer them as fast as I possibly can. We have a, a do. Can we have that one minute kind of video thing? Do we have a thing like that? Time, relentless and unforgiving, waits for no one. But what if you had just 60 seconds to change your life, to chase your dreams? Napoleon Hill faced such a moment. In just 60 seconds, he had to decide his destiny, a destiny that would shape millions of lives. In those fleeting moments, he envisioned a world where success wasn't just for the chosen few, but for anyone daring enough to dream. And so, he chose. He chose to become the author of Think and Grow Rich. 60 seconds. That's all it took to change his life and the lives of countless others. If you had 60 seconds to change your life and live your dreams, would you seize the moment? The choice is yours. There's one fabulous video. <laughs> the QR code is still up there to book a call. You, What you do is you open the camera on your phone and then you put the QR code in there and it'll say, click here. And you just click it and you got it. Yes. And you can take a picture of it. If you can't figure it out right on the spot, take a picture of it and then you can click on it later. Jeffrey, yeah. this was so incredible. Even me, I'm taking notes saying, oh my God, I need to work on this. I need to work on that. I need to work on, there's so much, even as a leader here, I have to work on. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, I love giving presentations. I love kicking butt. Um, I'm, I'm a happy guy, and my yeah. cat's right on the right on the chair, egging me on. <laughs> we love your cat. So it's incredible. I've learned so much just since I met you, and today's call has been incredible. A lot of people are putting in the chat. They need to go watch it again. It feels like a roller coaster. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yes. Yeah, I do, but I do that on purpose, Cleona. I don't want to dwell on something and have someone so bored that they can't wait to see what's next. I'm way ahead of you. I'm way, way, way ahead of you. You have to replay this two or three times, and then you can start to get it. But as I said, repetition leads to mastery. Repetition leads to mastery. And I'm just, you know, as I'm preparing this, I know, man, this is going to kick butt. This is really, And I actually deleted about 50 slides. I'm going to do it again. We're going to do one just on sales and one uh, just on personal development so you can get an idea of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. So what are the questions? Come on. Okay. While the questions are coming in, I just want to inform everyone that Jeffrey Gittermore, one of the kindest, most generous people I've ever met, 
has also, he's also involved. He's training our coaches every week on sales. He gives up an hour to an hour and a half of his time. We call it make a sale Monday. And we meet every Monday for 90 minutes and he kicks everyone's butt and he helps everyone to really understand selling. And that's the problem, you know, Jeffrey, most coaches, they love coaching. They love being in the wellness industry. They love serving, but they are so afraid of selling. And that's what we're so grateful to you. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Sure. I feel, um, and I, I help a lot of coaches around the world. And they have to understand that they're not selling a client. They're helping someone succeed. If you believe deeply in your ability to coach, or if you believe that the, the coaches at the Napoleon Hill Institute can help someone achieve, then you, you, you go for it. It's not very expensive to become a Napoleon Hill certified coach. It's not expensive at all compared to what's out in the market, in the marketplace. You have your own business. You have your own support system. And this company trains people better than I've ever seen anywhere before. And that's what you have to realize is important to you. You're looking for new information. You're looking for insight. But more important, you're looking for actionable items that you can turn into money. You're looking for things that you can do right now in your life that you can morph into dollars or wherever you are in the world. Some of you use euros, some of you use pesos, whatever you use, you can make them, you can earn them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. You know, because men, I'm a coach, I've been coaching for years. I used to work for Bob Proctor, as you know. And I, when we started the, when we relaunched the Institute, because the Institute has been around since the fifties, when Napoleon Hill, launched the Napoleon Hill Institute with W. Clement Stone. And so from my experience, coaches just are afraid of selling. But what you don't understand is that you just otherwise, you just have a certificate on your wall. And we all have certificates. We all have gotten more and more education. What I love about what we're doing is the business training. It's the sales training. It's having you, it's showing somebody how to grow a business. You need to know how to grow a business if you want to be a coach of any type. Yep. I, have, I have a question here from Jim. He says, what is the best way to inspire those who are closed-minded? Maybe find another person because some people are not going to open up their mind no matter what. Mm -hmm. But the best way to inspire someone is to ask them, hey, what's going on right now? Tell me about your job. Tell me about your kids. And they will automatically begin to open up just a little bit. When you ask them, you can't say, what's wrong with you? You look pretty glum. You can't do that. Their glumness will come out when you start to talk about them as a person. You need to reread how to win friends and influence people. I will give you all the questions that you need to be able to become interested in other people. Mm -hmm. and then you read Think and Grow Rich and you have all the philosophies and the strategies that you need to move forward with it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think you have to look at this from the perspective of what's the value, not to somebody else, although there's plenty of people that are saying this is the greatest thing they've ever done. What's the value to you as a person? How could you, by becoming a Napoleon Hill certified coach, increase the value of your life, of your life, not just your business practice or whatever? This is about creating an amazing lifestyle for yourself. And there's going to be events. I'm going to be in New York next month. At the end of the month, we're going to have an event. It's going to be phenomenal. Yeah. And then we have an event in June in New York again. So we, it's, the, it's our community where it's more mission driven. And, um, and just like you said, you asked a question the other day on the call, on the training call. Like, what would you do even if you weren't getting paid for it? And this is what I would do. This is what I would do. But but we also get paid and we get paid very well, more so than a regular job. And um, and I can't sometimes I can't believe we get paid to do this. That's how much I love it. Right. So you look at yourself and say, OK, where am I? You know, I, I ask 
people in my audience to define themselves. Where are you at this very moment in time? And that has to do with gathering all the stuff that happened in your past. And when you define who you are, then and only then can you determine where you're going to grow. Not go, grow. Mm -hmm. And when you have that, now you have your action plan. Now you can link on to somebody in the Napoleon Hill Institute or just being a Napoleon Hill coach that will get you to that next level. That's where you want to grow to. You want to grow to the next level, no matter what it is that you do. Mm-hmm. And by if you have the Napoleon Hill shingle and the Napoleon Hill capability, we don't just sell you a, sing, a shingle. You're trained and you have to pass tests in order to be able to get to that certification. It ain't easy, but yeah. it's fun. And yeah. not only is it fun, but you learn with other people that are just like you. People that mm-hmm. want to hit a home run, not a single. And it's, it's baseball season. The Yankees are going to open up the spring session of baseball and they're going to suck. But the Phillies are going to do amazing. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> I don't know much about that, but so I'll believe you. I'll go with your team. Just <laughs> so, okay. We have another question. So somebody's yeah. asking about the event in New York. Book your call and we will go over all the details with yeah. you and see if it's the right fit. And also we have private trainings just for our coaches in person. So we have, is it Proben? Let's see. Yeah. I hope I'm saying it. How long does it take to become from a novice seller to a competent seller? And the answer is the repetitions that you make are going to determine your fate. If you're making one sales call a week, you got a problem. If you're making five sales calls a day, you're going to be much more proficient at the end of a two or three month period of time. But this is what I would do. And this is a deep, dark secret. If you work for a company, the first thing you do is go to the customers of the company and find out, spend a day there free and find out why they bought and find out who decided and find out what they do with, with, with what the circumstances are there. And then you go to another company, another customer, and then another customer for five days you go talk to and do nothing but talk to customers. That will give you the best training in the world. That will give you all the answers that you need. And even if it's coaching, you go to five of the customers that are being coached right now and talk to them about why they do this. What's mm-hmm. the outcome been so far? How do they like it? How do they love it? What, what, what are the expectations that are being set? Once you get that personalized, customized training from someone who's actually doing it, you're rolling. Mm-hmm. I love that. Wow. So we have we have coaches on here, some of our certified coaches. Some coaches are in training, but they've been with us. I'm going to ask you right now, why did you buy? Why did you decide to come in and join us here at the Napoleon Hill Institute for our coaches that are watching live? And why have and are you happy? I want to know. I want to know. So let's see if we have any coaches watching. Put it in the chat. Why did you buy and are you happy with what you got here at the Napoleon Hill Institute? All right, let's see. And and keep this in mind. You don't get great at coaching in a day. Mm -hmm. You get great at coaching day by day. And you don't get great at selling in a day. You get great at selling day by day. And your job is to keep the student attitude at the forefront of your mind. I'm going to, I wake up in the morning and I spend one hour on myself. Every day, I spend an hour in my chair, currently occupied by the kitty cat. I, I sit down and I do five things every morning. I read. I write. I prepare. And that causes me to think and create. Can you mm-hmm. imagine if I wasn't prepared for this talk today? Mm-hmm. People would have said, well, you're not really on point. You're a little drifting. I didn't drift one second because I knew I only had a limited amount of time. And Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that that time was intense for you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm ready in the morning. And it's 530 in the morning when we do our self-discipline camp. But from 630 to 730, I'm by myself. Most important person in the world. And I'm reading and I'm I'm writing and I'm preparing myself for my day. 
And that causes me, I have no choice. I have to think and create. Yeah. You do those five things every day, and I've only done them now for like 25 or 30 years, so I'm going to do it another 25 years, and then that's it. I'm going to quit. But your job, you can probably do it more than I can, and you become an expert and then ultimately a world-class expert and then maybe ultimately the world-class expert. Mm. Yes, yes. So I don't know who put this comment because it doesn't give you um, your name. Give us your name. It says, I'm early in the process. Life was getting stale. I need a place to help me find my ch change my mindset and support me to be the best version of myself. I joined in February and I'm so happy and more energized. Love so it. I love it. I don't know who that is, but thank you. And I want to thank some of our coaches as you were talking who shared their testimonials. Luis. Jimenez, he's amazing. He's one of the leaders as well for the sports division and Spanish division. Phil Conway, thank you. Christina Westergaard, Aileen, Gary Glass. We have an incredible community. And Jeffrey, there's no coincidence that you're so successful, that you've written so many best-selling books, and you're you're just an incredible thinker. You really challenge me to get better, and I love that. I'm so grateful. And so your morning routine, if you're listening take notes. I'm always taking notes. When you're talking, I'm taking notes because I want to learn from someone who has results and experience. And that's, that's what you're doing. You're sharing with us your formula. I'm reading some of the notes here. There's a, the gut health coach lady <laughs> spends an hour a day in silence. That's incredible because yeah. what happens is I'm a meditator and I learned how to meditate literally professionally. And what happens is when you're silent or you're repeating your mantra, thoughts of your life bubble up mm -hmm. and you have to decide if you're going to keep them or let them go. Yeah. You have to decide if you're going to keep them or write them down. You have to, this is your decision. Yeah. And yeah. when you're spending that hour in silence, you come clear with yourself about where you go by investing your time in what's next. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've started to do silent meditation too. And even this morning I did it. And that, just exactly what you said. And I was catching my thoughts. I'm like, and the thought happens, you either go with it or you reject it and replace it. And I had, I was catching, you'll see where you are. You'll see what's going on when you catch your thoughts and you replace mm -hmm. them. And that's yep. what I love about what we're doing because as you know, Napoleon Hill said, we're receiving stations. We actually receive pick up thoughts from other people. We can literally pick up thoughts from other people and our obviously our own subconscious mind, our own conscious mind. And and so we have to be very careful. That's why we love here at the Institute, because we are all working and growing together on the same mission. All right, let me see if there's any more questions. Any other questions for Jeffrey? Um, let me throw something at you. I equate song lyrics to communication skills. And so the woman who's doing the silent thing in the morning, you need to listen to a song called Silent Morning. Mm. It's probably 30 or 40 years old by a guy named Noel or Noel. And it's freaking beautiful. It's not good. It's beautiful. So check that out. Mm -hmm. Put it in the chat. Silent Morning by Noel. And here is uh, Marae, my little kitty cat. Hi, Marae. Hi, buddy. <laughs> this, and this is another metaphor. I named Marae after the fourth arrondissement in Paris where I stay when I go there. And so now every time I call the cat, I think of my trips to Paris. Mm. every time and it's 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 easy to do the best way the best strategy to get new clients Luis you go online every day LinkedIn probably being the best and you post a value quote or you post a value message and you offer free to get more stuff and whoever clicks to get more stuff that's a potential client you don't make a sales pitch. You only offer value and then more value. Mm -hmm. and, then they, and then they click. 
They focus on giving, right? And that's, yeah. that's the mistake people make in sales. That's why there's so many terrible salespeople um, or coaches that every coach has to sell. You have to learn how to sell or you need to outsource it to someone who can sell. And so Cleo said, oh, I coached her for a webinar I was about to do and it changed my energy and I got 15 clients from it. Yes, I remember Whoa. that call, Cleo. Way to go. Way yes. to go. Yes. You see, that's why we need mentorship. We all need mentors. We can't see our own blind spots, right? All right, let's see. Jeffrey, not sure if this is proper to ask you here. Can you give me some few tips? I'm coaching my son with special needs, age 16. Thank you. Um, I grew up with a child who was autistic. And you have to have ultimate patience because mm -hmm. they don't think like we think. But I got, he, he, I'm not related to him, but I can tell you that I've spent hours and hours with him as a human being. And his family transformed him into an autistic child who loves. And I, I just saw him about a year ago and, and he hugged me and I about cried. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you have to do more things for that child. There's some discipline, obviously, but they have a skill and you have to find out what that special skill is. And then you have to feed that skill till it becomes better, whether they're Down syndrome or autistic or whatever their circumstances are. Some are disabled because they're blind or they're, they can't hear well, but you have to tap into what do they love to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That, yeah. Rocky, I'm going to call you personally. Rocky Pagano. Anybody yeah, named Rocky, I'm going to call him up on the phone. <laughs> Rocky's asking questions in the chat. Anyone who recently became an NHL. Okay. Jeffrey Gittimer is going to call you, Rocky, if you can send us your phone number privately. Actually, we can look it up in the registration, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to call a Rocky. You're right. <laughs> Where are you from, Rocky? Where's Rocky from? Let's see. He's got a cool name, though. Oh, yeah. That's a really cool name. Yeah, yes. if Rocky's from Philadelphia, I'm going to call him twice. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Exactly. Where's that exactly. sound? <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So we're going to um, send you a couple of email follow-ups. We're going to be making a bunch of calls. Oh, Stanford, Connecticut. Yeah, that, Connecticut is where people think they know everything, and they <laughs> piss off the people like us who actually do know everything. But we can help you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. The Gold Coast. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, Rocky, you're getting a call from the man himself. Beautiful. Any other questions for Jeffrey before we bring it in for a landing? <laughs> he said, Rocky said, we know nothing. We know you nothing. No, but you, you make like you know everything. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, and so they all, you all have things like, Oh, I got a brother-in-law that does that. I got a sister-in-law. Like, yeah. I totally love how anyone from the Northeast reacts to circumstances. And mm -hmm. I grew up in Philly, so I'm I'm in that club. And I actually lived in New York City for a time. And my my mom's from Brooklyn. So it's we're we're Northeasterners all the way. So all the way. I have a question for you. Okay. As you know, this week has all been has been all about drifting to leading and you've obviously mm -hmm. become an incredible leader. Your results speak for themselves. And um, so how did you stop drifting, Jeffrey? Well, as you mature, you become aware of the world. Mm -hmm. As you travel, you become aware of the world. And my expertise comes from reading, writing and traveling. I have wanderlust. That doesn't make me a drifter. I'm going someplace specifically to learn. Drifting is like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. Therefore, I'm going to do nothing or right. something that I don't want to do. 
Don't if you're doing something you don't want to do, freaking quit. Yeah. Put yourself out there. Drift out in the in the East River somewhere. You'll be fine. <laughs> you'll come to you'll come to shore in Brooklyn or Manhattan, one of those two places, depending on which way the wind is blowing. Make three months worth of cold calls and you're going to be fine. I promise you. But I think that you need to understand from me, from my standpoint, I read that that centers me. I mm -hmm. write that centers me. I mm -hmm. talk to other people that centers me. Mm -hmm. And you have to stay centered so you don't drift. I use slides. See how many slides? How many slides I think I used? Did you see? Did they show Over the number? 100, I think 168 slides you yeah. had. 168 yeah. slides. That keeps me from drifting. Yeah. I have no time to drift. I'm mm -hmm. clicking the slide so damn fast. I can't even think about drifting. <laughs> and so you have to do exactly the same thing. You have to prevent drifting. If you go to a horse race, you'll see horses. They have these things on the side of their eyes. They're called blinders. Mm -hmm. So you can't look to the left or look to the right. you got to look straight ahead and go. Mm -hmm. And that's your job. You can't be wishy-washy. Mm -hmm. you, you have to focus on you. Focus on getting better. Focus on being smarter. Mm -hmm. Don't wish that it were easier. Wish that you were better. Jim Rohn. What a yeah. great quote that is. Don't wish that it were easier. Wish that you were better. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. I, I sat in a half a dozen Jim Rohn weekend programs. Weekends taking notes the entire time in row one, sitting next to Darren Hardy. Me and Darren are pretty good friends. And I just, uh, every time so he would say something gold, I'd just whack Darren. Well, make sure you got that down. <laughs> make sure you take that note. <laughs> and pages, pages of notes from a person who just spewed gold all day long. Gold. Mm -hmm. Whole days, three full days. And uh, unbelievable, just mm -hmm. unbelievable. Expose yourself. And Jim himself said all the information that you need to succeed already exists. The problem is you're not exposing yourself to it. And so when you join the Napoleon Hill Institute for whatever means, you're going to be provided with incredible information on a daily basis yeah. that will kick your ass and inspire you to get to be a better person. That's the key. It, is it, will, it brings you back to being a student, which I've been a student all my life. I'm mm -hmm. not, I am not, not going to be a student ever. I'm mm -hmm. not putting the book down until the day I die. And you need to do exactly the same thing. And if you're watching television, what are you thinking? Yes, I agree. Think? You have a beer in one hand and a clicker in the other hand. Mm -hmm. Throw them both out the window. They're not doing you any good. Mm -hmm. So think about how you invest your time and mm -hmm. think about what can you do. Even if you listen, even if you just drink half and you watch TV half, now you have half your free time back invested in yourself. Mm -hmm. Most important person in the world. You can't piss away your time and think you're going to get better. It's just not going to happen. You can't hold the book up against the side of your head. At some point, you got to read it. Yeah. Not just shelf help. As Bingo. we call it. <laughs> yes. So, shelf. <laughs> <Shelf. laughs> I, I met like all it. these people. Oh, I have all these books. Yeah. Well, have you read them? Your results doesn't look like you have read them. Exactly. Um, and Coach Henrileka. Yes. Can you be certified from Belgium? Absolutely. We have coaches all over the world. We have hundreds of coaches now all over the world. We have leaders. We have a leader in Denmark, a leader in Australia. We're looking for leaders in other countries. Um, actually, Belgium would be a great place to start for you. So. Yeah, you have the best statue in the world in Belgium, the mannequin P. The little, the, the uh, king's son got lost, and the ruler said, wherever we find this kid, I'm going to make a statue. And they found him peeing on the street. And so the mannequin P is like the most famous thing on the planet. I, I actually have one here that I bought in Belgium when I was 20. Really? Oh, yeah. It's a fountain and it works. Wow. So anyway. I, I remember talking about Belgium. I just had a memory flashback when I lived in Northern Ireland. I was 14 and my grandmother sent me away to one of those exchange programs.
programs. <laughs> and I ended up in Belgium. That, that's where they sent me to a family. And um, I had an incredible time. I was there for two months. It was beautiful. And I loved it. I used to hide the chocolate under the bed. That was right. <laughs> I was stacking up the chocolate so I could bring it back to Ireland. The best, absolute I'm best. <laughs> I'm going to throw one more quick story here. This, somebody asked, have you always been successful? Um, growing up, my family was successful. And I thought that, you know, I'm the same. And my dad sort of brought me down to earth. And he said, listen, it's likely you will fail a couple of times. But I don't think you can succeed in business until you've failed a couple of times. And so when I went broke the second time, I went, great, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Rather than, oh, shit, I'm broke. And that's the attitude that you have to have in order to move forward. Now, granted, that happened 35 years ago. But the bottom line was that was my incentive to move forward. And you have to have the same incentive in your life. You have to have the incentive to move forward. And sometimes, and sometimes you have to associate with other people that can help you. And Napoleon Hill has arguably the greatest associations on the planet. You're going to meet people that are off the chart. Mm -hmm. Adrian, I will call you. Wait, there you go, Adrian. You're going to get a call. Yeah. And, it, and just like Jeffrey said, it's, Obviously, if it's not for you, we'll let you know. They'll be, we'll help you. Yeah. We'll tell you the truth. I'm sorry, and, but you suck pretty bad, and you're disqualified. <laughs> no, I, listen. No, I'm not going to say that ever. But <laughs> I'm going to challenge you to take a couple of tests for yourself. I have an attitude test. You need to take an attitude test. You need to understand how you can get to that next level by changing who you are on the inside. So you can change who you to change who you are on the outside, inside yeah. first, outside second. Mm -hmm. And I can confirm that everything Jeffrey's telling you today is the truth, because I I know this man now for several months. He is up every morning around four a.m. We get on a call at five thirty. We do a whole morning routine for an hour. We read together. We meditate. We do the work. And he's doing this six days a week. Then he's doing presentations. And then in the evening, he's working. He's always doing everything you do. This is why you're, you've been so successful, Jeffrey. You Thank practice you. what you preach. I walk my talk. Yes, um, somebody from Facebook user said, do you have my number? And the answer is I do not. So put your name and your number in the chat and we'll find. I'll find you. Yes. Put your name and your number in the chat and I will find you. And if you if they don't feel comfortable putting their number publicly, we'll we'll can't reach out and get their number. We have their names. Or put your email if you're not comfortable putting the number. Okay. I have some questions for you. Um, let's see. I don't know who this is from, but why is it that you read a chapter a day of Think and Grow Rich years ago? Was it a company goal? It was a company training program. I trained with seven or eight other sales guys. And we decided that Think and Grow Rich was the book that we had to know about. Mm -hmm. So every night you went home and you read a chapter and then somebody had to do a book report on it the next day. And it was random. The, the guy that was leading the group would never assign it to somebody. They just called on you. So you had to be ready. Mm -hmm. So everyone was always ready to give their chapter report. And it was unbelievable how much information got shared among those people. I still have the notebook. Mm -hmm. And you have to decide how dedicated are you to being a student? And you can read it on your own, but it's, if, you, if you have a wife or a husband, do it with them. Mm -hmm. It's a life-changing experience. And once you start with Napoleon Hill, once you're done thinking, grow rich, he's got 10 other books. And there's yeah. other personal development leaders, other metaphysical leaders that you can lop onto that are unreal, unreal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start next week doing, um, I have a life mate, not a wife mate yet, but I have a life mate and we're going to read to each other every morning for an hour. Wow. I love it. And, and that will, you know, we're, we're, we're going to obviously start with Napoleon Hill, but we're also going to do whatever it takes to be able yeah. to continue to learn. 
I love that. I love um, that. Gut health we, coach. Hold on. Gut health coach lady is rolling here. Jeff, what gets you up in the morning? Okay. Well, yeah. First of all, I have four daughters, four granddaughters, and a great granddaughter. If you don't think that gets your ass out of bed, you're in mm -hmm. the wrong world. So that's number one. My family gets me up in the morning and gets me excited because I get to interact with them every day. Not Eight out of nine live within 20 miles of me. So we're always together as a family. Mm -hmm. The second thing I do is I challenge myself. What can I do and learn something today that I didn't learn yesterday? When I was in college in 1960, I dropped out of school and I ran away from home. I, I went to Europe and I lived there for one year. When I got to some of the cities, when I got to Vienna, I didn't know who the Habsburgs were because I, I never cared about school. I just didn't care. Mm -hmm. I would cheat off somebody else's paper or I would just not read the book or whatever. And I said, no, this is stupid that I don't know this. So I dedicated myself at the age of 20 to learn something new every day. So I've been doing that now for 50 something years and you can do exactly the same thing. Just learn one new thing every day. And at the end of a year, you have 365 new things. You don't take Saturday and Sundays off to learn one thing. Just read something new every day about something you need. To, and at the end of a year, you're an expert. At the end of five years, you're a world-class expert at anything you want to be, literally. Okay. Um, All right. I think we have a few more. Uh, we have, let's see. I don't have their names. What do you think about speed rating? I don't like it. Can you recommend a good speed rating course? I no. can't recommend one because I don't I don't think it's valuable. I read slowly so I can appreciate and understand. I read mm -hmm. to comprehend, not to get the book done. Yeah, I agree with you. And you know, when I worked with Bob, he would stay on a page for weeks, weeks. So I don't understand the speed reading concept. Um, because as you, st repetition of study is the key. That's how your awareness grows. Uh, I'm going to challenge you with this thought. Go online, go to YouTube, enter the word Earl Nightingale, and then the words direct line. And you're going to see 30 some lessons of his that are about a half an hour apiece. And I defy you, listen to the lesson. And by the end of that one lesson, you'll have learned 25 new things every time. Guy was freaking brilliant. It's the best set of personal development information other than Napoleon Hill that I've ever heard. Direct line, Earl Nightingale, audio, free. Just go and click. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Okay. Have you always been always been successful? No. No. <laughs> no one has. No. If you, you run into brick walls. You run into bad business deals. You run into all kinds of stuff. Just deal with it. What you need, I'll tell you what I always have had, a positive attitude. Yeah. And that has gotten me through every single thing, whether it's bad health or bad relationships or bad whatever. Shit happens in your life. Just deal with it. <laughs> I, I, I gave it to the Napoleon. I gave it to the Napoleon Hill sales guys. In a barn full of horse shit, there's a pony. Find the bony. Find the pony. <laughs> Okay. I, Adrian, Adrian, don't worry. I'm calling you. Adrian. Okay. Aileen said, ever visited freezing Carnegie land, Jeffrey, in Scotland? Would you, you would love it here. The rain, it rains constantly. Currently only one degree. <laughs> I've been in Uban, uh, Scotland. Yeah. Uh, where the, the, my, my, one of my former wives was, uh, her castle. Was it was in the northern part of Scotland, so we went there for a few days and hung out, and it was gorgeous. It's not beautiful; it is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And for fish and chips, if you're going to buy me fish and chips, I'm cod, not haddock. <laughs> I love fish and chips because you know I was born in Northern Ireland and Scottish and the Northern Irish. They almost have the same accent, and we have the same culture. We eat the yeah, same. Yeah, Bunch of cheap bastards. No, we're not. <laughs> oh, you are. <laughs> You're saying bad words. We're going to get banned from. Oh, sorry. <laughs> huh? 
Beep. You forgot to put the beep. <laughs> if anybody needs more information, just <laughs> email. Just go into this chat and put information in there, and I will help you. What's yeah. the difference between cod and haddock? Are you kidding me? <laughs> cod is edible. Haddock is too fishy for me. Yes, yes. And if the team can take pictures or or collect the phone numbers, people are putting their numbers in here. That's wonderful. We are, we'll find a way to collect everything and give yeah. you a call. Yeah. Put your cool. name and your number because we can't see your names the way Facebook has it. Put your name and your number. You can actually go to StreamYard and give permission to Facebook to show your name. We'll do that yeah. for the next one. I'll, I'll explain at the very beginning. I apologize for not doing that. I should have done that. Yep. You see, we're always growing. We're always growing. All right. Any more questions? Need to book that call. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. So any last final words of wisdom from Jeffrey Gittimer for everyone? Stay away from idiots. <laughs> I'm working on that. <laughs> yeah. It's hard, to, it's hard to do. No, I'm going to just tell you this. Develop your belief system. Make your belief system impenetrable and everything else will fall into place. Yes, yes, I agree. And I'm doing a call on tomorrow and Saturday. Saturday's call that I'm doing, it's a bonus uh, VIP Q&A on Zoom. And it's going to be all about how to change your belief system. So I'm going to share all of that with you on Saturday. Make sure you register for that call. Jeffrey, this has been incredible. I'm so grateful. Everyone in the chat is so grateful for you always. And I look forward My to it. pleasure, Cleona. I want you to get it's time to get woman, you. <laughs> I can't wait to take you to Ireland. You're going to love I, it. I can't wait to go. We're gonna have the best time. We'll eat fish and chips or haddock and chips. <laughs> <laughs> And we're not kissing the Blarney Stone. We're not. No. Gonna... <laughs> I'm not telling you all why. It's a secret between me and Jeffrey. He knows why. Oh my God! <laughs> Don't tell them. Don't no, tell I them. No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm, here's, this is the challenge: be your best self. Hmm. If you can do that, everything else is going to fall into place. Be your best self. Be your best self. Yes. Yes. And on my Saturday, pleasure, you guys. My will, total pleasure. Take care of yourselves. Thank you, Until Jeffrey. My thank pleasure. You, thank you. Have a great day. There's homework. We're going to send out assignments. I don't know what the homework is, but they'll email it out to you. Do the assignments. The most important assignment is to take a picture and book a call, and we will help you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cleona O'Hara. I'm standing here at the Napoleon Hill Foundation, the headquarters, where the amazing Don Green, the CEO, invited us here this week. We've been here for a whole week going through Napoleon Hill's archives, his manuscripts, his original prints, and, and all of his great work. And, and I'm standing here really humble because I can now announce to you that I am now the CEO of the Napoleon Hill Institute, which is the world's first coaching division, where we're going to bring to you Napoleon Hill's teachings. We're gonna help coach you. You're going to be part of something so magnificent. I'm so grateful myself coming from Northern Ireland as an immigrant woman with no money. I grew up in poverty. You know, my clothes came from the neighbors next door. I used to get excited when they would come over and bring their clothes to give to me. And, and I always had a dream. I had a dream one day that I would stand in America and become a wealthy woman and have business all over the world. And you know, that dream has now become a reality. And it's become a reality because I applied the teachings and the principles of success that was laid out by the great Napoleon Hill. I applied them in my life. I believe in them. I teach them. I share them. Everything has changed in my life. And that's why I decided that I would go on a journey. And I made a decision 
that I'll spend the rest of my life sharing this with the next person I meet. I've become now not only a student of his material, but it is my duty that I am a steward and I must pass this on to as many people as possible. So if you feel there's something missing in your life that you want more happiness, more joy, more wealth, anything, you reach out to us because we have trained, certified coaches, the best in the world. And let me tell you, I put my name and my honor down on the line. This will be the number one personal development company in the world. And the reason why is because we are going to give the best service in the world from our heart. Each one of our coaches will be handpicked and trained and directed to help you. And if you feel that this is calling to you, you just fill out that form and someone from our team will get in touch with you. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side. I look forward to seeing you shine and grow and join our community. Thank you. I decided to join NHI, Napoleon Hill Institute, because I wasn't aware that I was looking to belong, to have a belonging and something better than where I was. And when I joined Napoleon Hill Institute, immediately I felt like I had anchored myself to something bigger than I could have ever imagined. This is a place of authenticity, it's a place of purity, and I can't think of any other place that I would rather be in terms of learning how to be a coach in the personal development industry. What's different about NHI is that all our hearts are connected. I really feel what's inside each and every single individual in NHI. As soon as I hear someone speaks, I know what's in their heart and mind, and I can feel it. The first word that I would sum up NHI, Napoleon Hill Institute, is I would say disruptive. We are disruptive. It's not a negative disruption. It's a disruption that will impact every area of your life. We are disruptive. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that the leaders in this organization they're in the study, they're in the growth, they're in the learning every single day. We see them on the calls, they're teaching us how to be coaches, how to reach the 8 billion people that we want to reach. I drifted for a very long time, for a very long time. And the worst part is that it was an addictive kind of drift. I'll say I was drifting. So you can be intellectual and drift, you can be successful and drift, you can be spiritual and drift. It's only when I decided to have a mentor who steered my way of thinking into channeling my feelings through a harmonic melody of life that I managed to embrace a new vision with a new feeling into encompassing a new blueprint that shaped the new reality that I live today. There's a vibration in a, in, a, in a rhythm that we have that is like no other organization in the world. And I think that's the beautiful thing about this community is that we're all one, we're all equal, and everybody, everybody is supporting each other.